Good morning to everybody. And what I wanted to um, explore today were these two aspects that can keep us steady when the world seems quite uncertain. So the first one is our home ground, our belly center. In the Chinese traditions, it's called the lower Tantien, or in Japanese, it's the Hara. Whatever you, whatever word makes sense to you, but it's this, this um, center that's got a good, you know, our center of gravity. So it's what really connects us with the earth. And from there, of course, we can rise up, we can reach out, we can move. But we'll start with really focusing on the belly center. And then what we'll explore is just how to take the next step. And there's a beautiful David White poem that I wanted to read for you all. Um, and it's called Start Close In and then take the next step, the one you don't want to take. So we'll explore that next step and just see how our body invites us to take the next step, even if it's the one that we don't want to take. So let's start close in. As you sit here in a cross-legged pose, or maybe on your knees if that's more comfortable for you. Bringing our attention close in to the body as it rests on the earth. to the breath as it flows through the body. And coming up close with our feelings as well, the emotions that often take us down their own pathways. So we learn over time that we can come back to home ground, we can regulate our emotional world by taking care And of course, that very speedy world of thoughts. They also carry us away, sometimes on autopilot, sometimes just down a whole chain of thoughts. And we discover that we've lost complete connection with the present moment. So again, we return to home ground. And then take the next step. And the way we navigate between this moment and the next step is having a sense of our intention. So if you'd like to, drawing your hands together at the heart. And getting a sense of your own deepest wish for this practice, for this week. Seeing if a single word arises that can guide you forward. And then releasing the hands down to the belly center. So we'll begin with some deepening breaths. We often use the analogy of filling a jug of water. So just feel the belly filling as much as you're able, pushing out the hands. And then as you exhale, softly draw the navel back towards the spine. You may find your spine curves backwards a little. Then inhale, breathe. You may find a little arch in the lower back. And then exhale, draw the belly back. So there's this very tiny pelvic rock, just to give us a greater sense of where our belly center is, our home ground.
And then coming into stillness, but still feeling the belly. And then seeing if we can invite the breath to rise a little. So it starts with the belly and then moves into the side waist and the ribs. And then releases as the ribs soften as the belly draws back. So there's just this expanding of the base. Belly, ribs, waist, really filling the lower part of our trunk, our torso. And then filling right to the top. So the belly fills, the ribs expand, and then feel the breath rising up under the collarbones. The spine will lengthen a little. And then, of course, it melts back down the same way. The collarbones soften, the ribs draw in, the belly lift. So the very classic yogic breath. It invites us back to the present moment, our home. Three more breaths, see if they can get deeper and slower. Our home ground is a place to relax, to find a sense of inner tranquility. We use the abdominal breath to bring us back home. And then putting fingertips either side of you on your mat. Again, start with breathing down into the belly, and as the breath rises, let the arms rest. Maybe lift the gaze. And exhale, feel the breath softening down, the arms releasing with gravity. Inhale up. Breath rises, arms lift, like on a thermal of air. And then gravity takes us back home to the ground. So we have these two abilities to be steady and held on the earth. And then to sense into what is the next step or the next movement. So for now, we're involving the arm shoulders, from right up into fingertips, and later, of course, our legs too will join our practice. So this time as you come up, leave the arms there, and then bringing the left hand to right knee, just a very gentle little twist, just to lubricate the spine. Then the arms come up again. And over to the other side. Moving with the breath. The gaze can lift as the arms lift. Just that sense of kind of focusing into the future, the next place to be, while still grounded in the breath. And when you work evenly both sides, let the arms come up once again, and this time gently bow forward. So in this pose, we squeeze the belly, but we can still feel the breath wanting to move down there. And maybe you'll find it's the lower back now that gets nourished. You can drop your head down towards the earth.
And then take the next step with the hands coming back. And this time, taking the hands behind you, I quite like to have fingers pointing towards the buttocks. And then draw the shoulder blades back. And fill the belly and then let that rise up into the chest, letting the heart lift over. The gaze can be forward, that's more uh, protective for the neck. But if your neck feels okay, maybe drop it back to rest on the trapezius at the top of the shoulder. And then gently coming upright and switching over the cross of the legs. Working with a less comfortable side, but just feel how you feel. And those three movements again, we're going to inhale the arms up, taking left hand to right knee, gently into the twist. Inhale, lift, and over to the other side. So from that lower tanti end, we just radiate our attention outwards to hips and to shoulders. And that's where our focus will be today. Once more to each side. Arms reach into the sky when you're ready. And then gently bang forward, squeezing the belly. Just coming to where your body allows you to go. It doesn't need to be deep. But just feel that compression in the belly so that as you breathe in, you seem to expand into the back body. Walking the hands back. And bringing them round behind you once again. Now expanding into the front body. So from the belly, fill all the way up into the heart. Either gazing forward if that's safer for your neck. Or gently resting your back. And release. One final sequence as we sit here. You can switch back to your comfortable side, but we'll keep working on the other side. So arms reach up one more time. And then gently bringing left hand down. And the right arm, first of all, just stretching up so that the whole sideways stays straight. And then gently lowering a little more, and now breathing into the right ribs. So really feel an expanding and opening. You may want to rest down onto the forearm if that's available, and feel the body go into a little curve. So really breathing out into those right ribs, stretching all the little muscles, the intercostal muscles, and let the head hang down and then over to the other side. So start off straight, just feel how that feels to be really, really long. So your left hip grounded down, and stretch all the way up in a long line, and then gently start to push that left ribcage out, go into a curve, and breathe into the ribs. Just letting the breath find its way into Little places, corners of the body that may not have had so much attention or space. And up. Once again, start with a straight line. And then take the next step to see where the body intuitively wants you to go. 
into that curve, expanding into the ribs. And then the next step, gazing up, feeling that subtle twist in the torso through the spine. So as we hold one pose, the next pose reveals itself to us. Coming up, starting with that straight line, and then sensing where does the body want to go next? Does it want to curve over and stretch into that left rib cage? And then maybe into that little twist, lifting the gaze, bringing the shoulder back, feeling your way in. And release. So really tuning into the body and noticing where it invites us, what the next step is. So let's just roll into the shoulders just to release any tension that sometimes finds its way. And then when you're ready, rocking forward and coming on to hands and knees. So take those undulations with the spine, just as we did in that very subtle variation, sitting on the ground. So now you can really invite the breath to go into the belly, to float up into the heart, to lift the gaze, and then let the tailbone sweep under, feel the belly squeezing in and all the breath releasing. Yeah, just a little bit of movement to juice us up. And we balance strength with flexibility. And that allows us to find renewed mobility in the joints. And allows us to trust in the movement of the body guiding us forward. So again, let's warm up a little bit, just come steady. So the wrists are under the shoulders, the knees under the hips. This time as we inhale, let the right leg float back and up. And as you exhale, let that right knee squeeze the breath back. Inhale back. Exhale, squeeze. So the body starts to learn, it starts to lose awareness. It goes on to autopilot. So just feel when you're in one pose, what intuitively does the body want to do next? So of course, that's not so easy to honor when you're being guided in a class. But when you do your own practice, just really get a sense of what does my body want me to do. And now I invite you to the next step that you may not want to take. It's the right knee to the right elbow. Just lifting a little bit. And then back. And again, right knee to right elbow. Lifting. And back. And final time. and release into child's pose. So this is our classic home ground. Feel the breath once again sinking down into the belly, into the lower back. And once you've been there for a couple of breaths, your body may be inviting you to move. So let's honor that, let's move forward. Hands once again underneath the shoulders and this time working on the neck. So left leg lifts. And then where does it want to go next? Squeezing out the back. Inhale back. Exhale, squeeze. 
One side may feel quite different from the other, maybe less comfortable. So sometimes our intention needs to guide us forward. Even if right in that moment, it's the step we don't want to take. If the body feels weak on one side, it takes effort to strengthen it. And yet our intention, of course, is to bring strength and flexibility to the whole of the body. So now the next step, knee to the left elbow, lift it nice and high, and back. Second time. Lift it back and up, and the third time. Just hold it there for a micro second. And then release. Taking the knees a little wider on your mat, feet close together, soften back into child's pose. So this can be our resting pose. It's a beautiful place just to come back to the earth. But we can also make it active. We can bring awareness to the lower tantrum. So as you rest here, we're now going to energize the legs, the hips. So squeezing the knees towards each other. It won't move far. We call it isometric movement. But the body stays pretty much where it is, but we activate the muscles. So squeeze the knees in. Let the breath move right down into the belly, into the hips, into the sits bones. You may feel the sits bones now opening a little. And then as you exhale, let everything release and soften. Notice how you can melt down towards the earth. And then we'll do that rhythmically with the breath. So on the inhale, squeezing the knees in, feel the breath filling the belly and the lower back. The rib cage, and then on the out breath, let it soften and melt like water spreading on the earth. Three more times. And let everything go, soft, connected, grounded, and held. And then noticing that impulse to movement, the impulse to take a step. Inhale forward. And once again, underneath. The shoulders, knees underneath the hips. And a couple of cats and cow just to release if there was any tension creeping into the lower back. So let's start to play a little bit with the shoulders as well as our hips. So let the right leg float up and back. And the knee comes into the chest. Once again, inhale up and back, find that rhythm, drawing in, better, and this time we'll take the step forward between the hands, and gently pushing that front foot into the earth to rise up, you can hold the hands steady on the front knee, drawing the tailbone down, feeling the stretch through the front of the left. And then taking the arms wide, just find your balance, squeeze your inner thighs towards an invisible midline. And then gently bringing the hands behind you and clasping the fingers together. Draw them down, squeeze the shoulders. Just keep drawing the tailbone down as well. Your legs are in right angles. And then gently lift the hands just a little bit 
Feel the shoulder blades squeeze. And release. And now bending the elbows and bringing your hands into your left waist. So your right hand is wrapped right behind you. Your left elbow is out to the side. And feel that sense of being supported across the back body. So that right forearm is holding you. And then gently ease forward just a little bit. Keep pulling the tailbone down. Keep lifting up into the heart. You may notice a bit of a stretch through the right shoulder. Just finding your way in. And then keeping that right hand on the waist, you can release the left hand down to the right. So you're being kind of held in grace from behind and then gently let the body turn to gaze upwards. And what's the next intuitive step is maybe to reach into the sky. The so finding our easy twisted limb. Moving from pose to pose, variation to variation. And then release. Tucking the back toes, finding downward facing dog. Our first time. So the knees can be bent. And just really stretch out the shoulders here by pushing the floor away, broadening through the shoulders, breathing into the upper back. And then you can pedal out the feet just to stretch into the calves and the hamstrings. Maybe gazing under alternative armpits so that you can also get that little stretch through the ribcage. Coming into a still down dog. And sensing into your own body what would be the next step that your body would want to make. Does it want to float forward into plank? From there, does it want to float back? Of course, when you're watching on the screen, you can do whatever you like. So you can trust the intuition of your body. Switching up your yoga practice and becoming quite intuitive. Sensing where your body wants to go. And then I invite you back to hands and knees so that we can explore the shoulders and the hip flexors on the other side. So letting the left leg float up behind you. Drawing it into the chest, squeezing out the stale breath. Inhale back. Exhale, squeeze. And the third time, we'll step that foot forward between the hands, push down to come up, and resting in our low lunge. Again, right angles with the legs, drawing the tailbone down. Squeezing towards an invisible midline to keep you nice and steady. And then bringing the arms wide, soft into the shoulders. We're going to once again interlace behind. Just notice if you can interlace with the other finger in front. We often have habit patterns, even the way we hold our body. So pulling down. Squeezing the shoulder blades together, keeping the tailbone drawing down, feel that stretch right through the front of the right hip, the lengthening, that deep hip flexor. And then maybe seeing how does it feel, keeping the palms squeezed towards each other, just to lift the hands a little. Will the shoulders allow it? If you've got a lot of musculature in the shoulders, you may want to open the hands so that they can be a little bit wider. Just feel your way. And 
and then release. And now bringing the hands into the right side of the waist. Feel that sense of being held. And maybe that opening, that stretch through the left joint. And then keeping left forearm where it is, holding your lower back, bringing the right hand down. And gently turn. And if your body invites you, let the top arm reach up into the sky. Keep squeezing the inner thighs towards each other, keep lengthening and finding that elegant twist. And release. And this time, tucking the back toes, we're going to make a big step forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. So the hands can come where they do, maybe on the fingertips, maybe on the shins. And then let one knee bend as you really press the other foot into the ground and kind of lift up into the hip. And then the other side. So just feel yourself really stretching alternate legs long, rooting to rise. Seems counterintuitive sometimes, but when we really push down, we find the body feels safer. And then it can lengthen up as well. And then coming back to your normal Uttanasana, the forward bend. Imagine you're folding over a pole so that the abdominals are just lifting you up a little bit. And then the torso drapes down. And then bending the knees just enough to push into the earth, roots to rise. Arms wide and lift into the sky, the palms can come into touch, and then down the midline. And do you recollect your intention, your single word that was guiding you forward to take the next step? Even if it's a step that we don't want to take. We're reaching up. Just a couple of half salutes. We're going to bow down. The hands can rest on the shins as you draw the heart forward, squeezing the muscles of the back to lift you up. Exhale, fold. Lift through the belly. Micro bend in the knees. Push down to come up. Reach into the sky once again. And draw down the midline and make it fluid and flowing. Arms sweep wide, lift, exhale. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold, lift up through the belly, through the six bones. Micro bend, push down to rise up. Down the midline. Momentarily recollecting your intention. Let that guide the next step. As we reach into the sky, as we bow forward, inhale, flat back. Stepping the right leg back. Find your lunge nice and strong. Lifting with that back thigh. Really activating around the femur bone. And then keeping the back heel lifted, you'll need some balance here. Push down to come up. There can be a micro bend in the knee, that's absolutely fine. So your supported hand on the leg, and then gently dip and come up. Dip like a little lunge curtsy.
And then this time, just coming to a place that feels safe. If the back heel can lift, that will move you a bit more forward. Or it can stretch back if you want to deepen into the hips. And then take the arms wide once again. But this time, we'll bring them in front. So wrapping right arm under the leg. These are our eagle arms. And they twine around either the back of the hands together or twine once more so the palms come into touch. And then lifting up with the elbows and holding the pose. Maybe lifting, opening the heart a little more as the shoulders broaden and kind of hug around. And then untwining and release. Downward facing dog. Pushing the earth away from you, broaden the shoulders. And then child's pose. Knees wide. Big toes together. Settle back. To breathe deep into the belly. To connect once again with what makes us feel safe. From that place of safety, we can take the next step. Maybe squeezing the knees in just to activate the pose. Letting them soften and release and spread as the breath releases. Once more. And then finding your way back into downward facing dog. Breathing in, breathing out. Lift the gaze so the feet know where they're going. And step one foot forward and the other. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold, and back to the rhythm that our body is used to. Coming up, arms sweep wide, touch at the top, down the midline. As they come to the heart, we recollect. Then they release, we lift once again. And bring your playfulness to the other side of the body. Inhale, heart draws forward, and exhale, the left leg back this time. So nice and strong, really hugging around that femur bone, keeping the back heel lifted. And when you feel ready and steady, push down to come up. You can support on that front knee until you find your balance. And again, just choosing do you want the heel a little high or longer? Just find your place. And then once again, our curtsy, just activating strong muscles in the body. And then finding your still lunge. Let the arms come wide once again. This time we'll take the left arm under the right, twining around, just feel that broadening through the shoulders and then lifting them up, deepening into your lunge as much as feels safe. And tuning in. What is the next step your body wishes to take? We can release. Find your way down to the earth and then downward facing dog. Breathing in, releasing any tension.
and then floating forward into plank. Finding a nice long spine. Heels can push back, crown of the head can draw forward. And then the knees touching the earth. And a little push up. Rolling shoulders back, finding a cobra pose. And then down and up. And down. Uh, and then once again, that isometric movement. So we come into our cobra, and then without moving the hands, pull them back. Feel how that lengthens the heart forward. See if you can breathe not just into the belly, but into the compression on the lower back. And then your body is probably asking for the next step to come down to earth and to rest for a moment. The hands like a pillow. And the body like water spreading as you release tension. And then after some stillness, we often intuit movement. There's this inner sort of pull forwards. So let's bring hands under the shoulders, toes tuck, activate the thighs, abdomen engage, push up into plank and down the face. Breathing in, breathing out. The right leg floats up the side. The knee comes into the chest, the three legged back. Inhale back. This time, let's bring the knee across the body towards the left elbow. And back. And over to the right, as we did in the kneeling variation. And back. And then, of course, we come forward between the hands. This time, ground in the back heel. We're going to windmill up into warrior two. So the arms out nice and wide, gazing over your front fingers, knowing where you're going. And even if we don't want to take that next step to take us there, we just start close in and build up the courage to move forward. So let's take the hands behind us once again, interlacing the fingers, drawing down, squeezing the shoulders. And then we can gently bow forward into our humble warrior. The arms lift up into the sky. And release back. Keep the hold of the hands. Draw the shoulders down, lift the heart. And then bring the hands into the left waist once again. And we bow, we um, bend forward into that front knee. Just feel that sense of being held, supported from behind. I love that expression of when somebody has got your back. So this morning we can get our own back. Release the hands from that side, bring them into the other waist. How does that feel? Takes us into the more traditional orientation for a warrior to and then gently release. Arms float back into the sky. And windmill into your downward facing dog. Breathing in, 
Breathing out. And now the left leg gets its chance. So lifting up behind and sweeping it forward into the chest. Inhale back. Across the body. To the right elbow. Inhale back. Keeping it nice and high as it comes towards the left elbow or the left shoulder. Inhale. And stepping forward between the hands. Grounding the back heel and windmill up and over. And into our warrior two, gazing over those front fingertips. And then bringing the hands down behind. Just once again, remembering your clasp. Can you switch it up? Pull the shoulders together. And then gently, humbly bowing forward. Just inside that front knee, lifting up. Just feeling your way in. Only to where your body allows. No stress or strain. And then releasing, lifting up, keeping the hands clasped. And bringing them into the right waist. And just feeling your shoulder open as the knee opens. Releasing, switching sides, opening the right shoulder now. Strong in the legs, open in the hips, open in the shoulders, and centered at the bend. And release back into warrior two arms and windmill forward. This time, bringing the back foot forward to meet the front. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. And once again, rooting to rise all the way up into the sky. The palms come to touch. And then down the midline. To the heart. Once again, start close in. Can you feel your breath? Can you sense the feet on the ground? And then gently releasing the hands. Going to sweep the fingertips on the earth. I'm into Utkatasana momentarily, just one last high flow of the femur bones with the thighs. And then lowering all the way down. And sitting on the earth. And a couple of undulations here just to free the spine from any tension that. Builds up in our standing sequence. Often takes a lot of strain. And then gently letting your spine be invited to the earth. One vertebrae at a time. Seeing if you can get a lovely gentle rolling down. We may have flat spots where there's less flexibility between the vertebrae. But over time, we gently find that mobility once again. And even when you're down here on your back, you can keep those little undulations. And bringing the heels close to the buttocks will just Take some rhythmic bridge poses just to feel once again what you feel. 
Where is the next step for you? So pushing down to come up. It can be fun to have the arms at right angles, fingertips pointing to the sky and just push them into the earth. And then sinking the hips and pushing the feet up, down to lift the hips. So feel that rhythmic movement. Inhale as you come up to protect the lower back. Exhale as you come down. And the next inhale will be hold. If you like to clasp the hands as we've been doing, walk the shoulder blades together. A strong bridge. And then release. Tailbone to the heels. Taking the arms wide. And choosing your twist, you're welcome to keep knees together. A more gentle twist. Or you can let one leg lift over the other, just as we did with the eagle arms. Kind of eagle the legs and let them drop over to the side. Maybe resting on a cushion if that gives you some support so that the shoulder can keep down as well. See where you can soften. Are there any little muscles that are gripping? And the body find its way into a deeper pose, not through stress or stretch, but through relaxation and letting gravity do the work for us. And then gently untwining or coming back onto your back. And whichever pose you did on the one side, just allow your body to explore that on the other side. If you use a cushion or a block, switch it over so that you have equal support. Remember to caterpillar the spine that can just help create a little bit of space. And then gaze in the opposite direction from the knees. And spread, melt, release. And as you lie here, noticing, is there an impulse to move? Are you comfortable to be still? To stay close in with your experience of the present? Or is there an impulse to take another step? And then gently rolling onto your back.
And sensing into your body, what would it like from you right now? Does it want to come straight into Shavasana? Does it want a shoulder stand, a hug, or a happy baby? Just seeing how the body speaks to you when you listen. And trusting that this inner guidance is actually available to us all the time. Where we can stay close in, we can then be guided in terms of where to move. And then whenever you're ready, you find your way to the most nourishing pose of all. Covered by a blanket, just taking care of our own needs in our Shavasana. And right now, there's no step to take. Those steps will find us later in the day. If you find the mind wandering, come back to home ground. Maybe with hands on the belly. Just as a reminder to breathe into the lower tantien. Allowing the world to feel manageable once again. Where all of our attention is right here. And when your body does invite you to move, make it very gentle. Just wiggling toes and fingers, little circles in the wrists, in the ankles. Just feeling these matching joints in the toes, the fingers, the feet, the hands, and then into the the knees and the elbows, the shoulders and the hips. And coming right back to the center. Bringing one knee into the chest and then the other for that supportive hug. And then rolling to one side. A full circle, ending as we began. Close in. Once again, noticing how is the body in this moment? How is my heart? 
and the head mind, the world of thoughts and ideas. And seeing if we can trust our inner world today to lead us forward. So let's make our dedication to our friends, our family, all those throughout the world. Whatever benefit we gain from our practice, let's imagine sharing that, offering it outwards with the sound of a single arm, taking a deep in-breath together and a releasing sigh. Remembering throughout today to start close in and then take the next step. Namaste.